There you have it. That's that sound of the closing bell on the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, I'm sure we'll see pictures any moment. Uh, there you go. Usually happy folks up there promoting their business. It was actually a slow start to the month for all three major indices. The Dow Jones tried rebounding to close out the day uh, in positive territory, but that's not where it ended up. You see it there it ending the afternoon um, down some 37, all at what, 40, almost 46 points. And the S&P 500 and the tech-heavy Nasdaq both ending the day with slight losses. Both are off around a quarter of a percent. Let's bring in Evan Halper now for more on this. He's a business, business reporter covering the energy transition for The Washington Post. Evan, welcome. Hey there, Evan. Thanks for having me. You got it. Good to it. see you. Great to have you here. Tell us, what's driving the market today? Well, obviously, we have this big, um, this big bill that the Senate to pass. And the bill includes all kinds of incentives for electric vehicles, for the solar industry. Um, you know, it's a big climate package, uh, but it also includes, you know, tax measures. And obviously part of that is, um, you know, more taxes on companies is is going to make some of them nervous. And so I think that's that's driving some of the um, the mixed reaction you're seeing there. You know, uh, as we look at what the potential could be out of some of this pending legislation, China controls more than 80 percent of the world's solar panel production. Um, what is proposed in this new climate legislation to make the U.S. more competitive in that space? How might companies be incentivized to support those efforts? Sure. There's billions of dollars of tax credits to try to bring the solar supply chain back to America. I mean, this is a supply chain that China has invested heavily in, and a lot of American companies have gone out of business. At the same time, demand for solar panels in the United States is just, it just keeps soaring. Uh, you know, there's no end to the amount of demand for these panels in this country, but most of them are coming from China, which can produce them so much cheaper than, than we can. So part of what this bill aims to do is to make it possible for American companies to make the products here, bring some of the supply chain back and be able to sell the products at prices comparable to what China can sell them for. And Evan, how is this climate spending bill expected to help more people transition over to electric vehicles? Yeah, I'm sorry, I missed part of the question, but in, in terms of what's in there to, to push people to, to transition toward electric vehicles, obviously there's tax credits. There's There's been a big fight. Senator Manchin had been saying, you know, too many electric vehicle tax credits have been going to just people who don't need them. Uh, you know, a lot of the drivers of electric vehicles, their expensive cars have high incomes and what they're they're renewing the ones um, similar to those that have already existed, but doing two things to them, um, or three really. One is they're, they're limiting uh, the income level at which you can uh, be eligible for these tax credits, you know, $4,500 for an electric vehicle. But if you are in a household that earns more than $300,000, you don't qualify for that tax credit. Um, two, the companies that make these electric vehicles, again, this is a supply chain issue. I mean, the 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 materials that they're using to make the batteries for these electric vehicles, a lot of them you know, are coming from China, from places, from companies that China controls elsewhere around the globe. And there's a real need, a, you know, really a national security need to bring some of these supply chains back to the U.S. or at least back to countries we're friendly with. And so it, it makes those tax credits to be eligible for them again. You need to be buying a car from a company that's sourcing a lot of its materials either domestically or a country we have a free trade agreement with. Um, and that's going to be tough for some of these automakers to meet, you know, for, it'll be easier for Tesla, which has been working harder for Toyota, which, uh, you know, is heavily dependent on China for its supply chains. And third, for the first time, it's going to make this tax credit eligible to people who buy used EVs. That's a really big deal. Um, that sort of brings, broadens the, uh, the availability to lower and middle income people which is crucial to the climate transition, the energy transition is getting more people, uh, you know, not just the wealthy in EVs, but, you know, the rest of American drivers. Yeah, those EV opportunities, considering how resistant Senator Manchin had been to these types of policies, really significant and attracting a lot of attention. We'll see if Senator Sinema um, mm -hmm. agrees and votes along with that as well. Hopefully we'll see soon. Yeah. Evan Halper, thank you. Thank you, Evan. Thanks for having me.